I would like to introduce our guest speaker. Ms. Rashi Soneza Ma'am is a co-founder of Mind Ease Psychological Services and Wellness Center Private Limited. She has done BA Psychology from Jesus and Mary College, University of Delhi, MA Clinical Psychology from Amity Institute of Applied Psychology, Amity University, and MPhil from Amity Institute of Behavioral Health and Elite Sciences, Amity University. As a clinical psychologist, she has experience working in both government and private organizations such as like Gen uh, G JPNATC, Ames, New Delhi, as a clinical psychologist in a research project, National Institute to Empower Person with Dis Disability, NIEPID, NMC Noida, etc. She also holds experience of working for refugee mental health in a project funded by Australian Home Affairs at Pacific International Hospital, 40 uh, Morris by Papua New Guinea. She holds experience of five years of working as a clinical psychologist in the field of mental health. She had presented several research papers at repetitive national and international conferences. Also, she had published several research papers in repetitive national and international journals. She has been a resource person for CRE workshops and also organized and being a trainer in several workshops and training programs. She set up Mind Ease, which also conducts workshops, internship, and skill training program in clinical psychology, counseling, criminal psychology, career counseling, etc., for students and professionals. Thank you so much, ma'am, for being with us. Now the session is all yours. Firstly, I would like to put forward my thank you to SIFS and uh, Sanyal ma'am for giving me opportunity to sh share my knowledge on this platform. And I think I'm pretty uh, uh, lucky because all the faculties that are here, uh, Abha ma'am, Sanyal ma'am, Amita ma'am, they have taught me. So I'm a byproduct <laughs> of these faculties. So I hope everybody is in pink of their health. Uh, amid the pandemic and those who are not, we wish for speedy recovery. Without any further delay, we'll begin with the uh, topic. So my topic, as you all can see on the, you all were able to see on the screen was do's and don'ts for counseling. So we'll not only stick to counseling, uh, we're gonna focus on do's and, we're gonna focus on do's and don'ts of counseling as well as in therapy, because I'm a hardcore clinical professional. I'm a clinical psychologist by profession. So we're also gonna focus on psychotherapy. So what are the do's and don'ts when we are in a therapy or a counseling session, when it comes to communication, the sole focus would be related to communication. So to establish a good communication, the most important thing is to have a good rapport. So when I say good rapport, building a good rapport needs a lot of patience. And it's one of the most important aspect of a therapy session. <clears throat> And it needs a lot of patience and almost one to two sessions are dedicated to build up a good rapport. And to build up a good rapport, the first thing that we need is listening skills. Now, when I say listening skills, it's not only just sitting and listening. That can also be termed as hearing. So listening means understanding. When I say understanding, you also understand between the lines. And these between the lines are small, um, non-verbal uh, things that are being delivered from the patient end or client's end. So active listening and reflecting is the foremost uh, thing that we're going to discuss here. So active listening and reflecting is basically, uh, it's important to, it's, it's not always important to give solutions all the time when somebody comes with a problem to you. At times, it's just important to listen and validate the emotions because that can be more helpful than trying to solve a problem. Um, because when someone shares what they feel and when they feel that they are being heard or they are being understood, they automatically feel that they are supported. For example, if somebody is coming, I'll be quoting a uh, good amount of case examples so that we all can understand we, and we all can be on the same page. For example, if you are in a clinical session, and the patient is sharing about grief, grief that he or she has lost his mother, father, or any loved one during the pandemic state. So there is no solution to this problem. The vacuum would be there. Yes, you can definitely provide better coping strategies, 
but that will come on a later end on the first front you have to first establish a rapport so that the person becomes comfortable enough to express what they are feeling and there should not be any uh hitch in sharing any kind of topic or thought that is going on and at that time it's very important that you silently first understand what the patient is going through and give time if patient is taking pause respect the pause uh at times we are in a tendency to fill up the gaps so don't fill up the pause if patient has taken the pause respect the pause and you also stay silent for a while let patient get calm get settled and say something then pick up the pace and go in the same flow that is what we actually call a good listening skill not to only listen to what is being said also at the same time able to understand the non verbal communications at the same time when you are listening you also have to reflect in another case example for example there is a case of ocd the patient tells you that i don't feel comfortable so at this time you also have to reflect tell the patient okay you are not feeling comfortable so what is the what is there that is making you uncomfortable so when you ask question don't uh, use the terms like why because why at times sounds very interrogative use the terms like what and how that gives more space to the individual to express in a more open ended form so paraphrase and summarize what patient is saying and restate them in your language so that patient actually gets a confidence in you that yes you are understanding what patient is saying i'll be giving another case example uh, or another example on when we said don't use the state term like why because when you ask somebody why you felt like that it sounds like you are judging the person so instead ask what made you feel like this or how are you feeling right now try and use statements instead of questions because this helps individual to understand and clarify their own thoughts and emotions in a better form for example um you are in a conversation and there is a resistance during the session and patient feels little angry about something so you can say that you are upset that i am not getting what you are expressing or you are sad and angry because of this particular reason so instead of saying why are you feeling angry or why are you angry you give an elaborative statement or a even a question but not with the term why with the term how or what also as i said don't fill the statements or complete the statement of the patient when patient takes the pause you we all need to hold at that time because that pause can be a resistance that patient might not be feeling that comfortable to express a certain thought or if you have a very good rapo and patient might be in a state where he or she is framing a sentence in the head and then wants to express the same so at that time hold on wait till the time patient completes the statement don't be in a rush or hurry to complete the statement try to ask questions those are open ended so if i ask you are you feeling good or bad so i am giving you only two options to say either yes or no good or bad so you might be feeling anxious you might be feeling low you might be feeling uh, enthusiastic about something or zealous about something so i am not giving you the space to express what is going on inside of you so always ask questions or always provide statements that are open ended and not close ended as this will give more time more space to express maintain a non judgmental attitude now this is very important uh, i'll be giving an example here so i had this particular patient of ocd ocd is one of the most common things that appears in the clinic during the sessions 
so uh, the patient says that he or she has a urge to see his uh, basically he he has a urge to see his mother again and again or to touch the mother again and again now at this time if you become judgmental in your head oh what kind of a person he is so that will not lead the patient to any further uh, like progression a good progression in the therapy it will stop or hinder the therapy there itself so you have to be very non judgmental here and see the person apart from the illness the, so you have to understand the nature of illness is like that that everybody or uh, the nature of illness is like that that patient is under the control of the illness so when you see the patient don't understand the patient from the perspective of illness and understand the patient in a holistic manner and try to understand the complaints so those judgments because we all are coming from a background and a belief system so such judgments may hinder the communication and the progression of the therapy at the same time uh, also try and maintain poker face whenever it's required so i'll uh, uh, coming uh, with ex- another case example at times we listen to the cases where uh, counseling cases of marital counseling or cases of incest so at that time if you come up with expressions or micro expressions on your face uh, the patient might feel a little you know may, may take a little back seat before expressing his or her thoughts and may not be able to confide in you with respect to you being his or her counselor or therapist so uh, there's a case example where i was dealing with a, a homosexual couple but uh, only the first uh, person came uh, to me before entering into proper couple therapy so the first person in the romantic relationship came and uh, she said that i am facing uh, facing difficulty with my partner i was like okay so let me know or elaborate a little more on how i can help you so uh, she said that she is not very understanding so if at that moment i would have given expression like okay she so can you see those micro expressions on my forehead she if the patient is sensitive enough the patient will notice those expressions and will take a back seat may not come again for therapy for with you or may not be able if he or she doesn't have more options may not be able to express what exactly is going on in a relationship completely to you so those micro expressions are need to be handled with care so try and make a uh, po- as much uh, poker face as possible when it's required it's also uh, at the same time it is also required to give expression some time because then patient should be able to connect to you and should not feel that you are a robot so at the same time you should be sensitive enough to know where to give expressions and where not to give expressions now students often ask that ma'am being in ma and ba when we sit in observation we tend to give expressions but see you have to understand don't feel bad about it because uh, we also go through rigorous training of mphil for 2 years under supervisions of various psychiatrists psychologists clinical psychologists and professors that's how we you know uh, we form our whole like in the whole capacity what we are presenting today so that needs a rigorous training so you going to develop those skills over time don't be in a rush to see patients and develop those skills it needs time give yourself time and try to be more knowledgeable and educative about the concepts that you are dealing with next important point is have good command on your tone volume and pitch it has to be maintained in a certain fashion uh in yesterday's session that was taken by uh, amita ma'am she has given a very beautiful example that of a sentence single sentence she has taken up and pressure two different words so i want to go and i want to go in the in both the statements we have uh, she has pressured two different words in the first statement she has pressured i in the next statement she has pressured go so both the statements are delivering different meaning giving a case example so just imagine that you are dealing with a, a sensitive case of severe depression where the patient comes and expresses about coming with a trigger warning here suicidal thoughts 
that he or she are having suicidal thoughts and uh, it's getting difficult to deal with. So at this time, you have to be very uh, sensitive in your tone, in your selection of words, what you are saying, and in expressing what he or she is going through in your words. Paraphrasing is very important here and how you will be able to handle the patient here. So that tone and volume needs to be empathetic and understanding at the same time. You can't be, be like, okay, I understand. No. The moment we say, I understand, the patient would simply ask you, ma'am, how can you understand? You are not in the same state. So give time to the patient. Wait, take a pause, let patient come up, express more. And then whatever crux comes to you, express the same and Obviously, whatever the possible coping strategies deliver the same. But one wrong term, statement, wrong selection of word can lead to bad consequences in such sensitive cases. Uh, this tone and volume is also uh, very important when you are dealing in cases uh, where you are dealing with rape victims, you are dealing with minors, you are uh, dealing with uh, grief. All these cases, these uh, tone and volume of your speech is very important of, and how you, and the selection of words. And uh, <clears throat> uh, coming to the case with minors, it's uh, very important, just a, uh, uh, just a suggestion here or a piece of advice. It's very important when you are dealing with adolescents, when you are making a rapport, that time, speak to the adolescent or the minor first, then going to the guardian or the parent because the moment you're going to speak to the parent first the adolescent will feel oh they are already under an impression now whatever i will say or deliver they might not just understand and they'll be under the impression of what my parent or guardian has already shared so when you are dealing with adolescent make sure you speak to the adolescent first or the minor first then talking to parent or the guardian and while uh, taking a uh, session with the uh, minor so somewhere who uh, a patient who is uh, of an age or a client who is of age of seven eight you have to <clears throat> go on to the level of the child to have an interaction so don't make a barrier of chair and table there you can't be on the other side of the table and establish a good rapport with the child you have to be on the same side of the table so if the child is playing with an elephant toy you have to go down sit on the floor and play with the elephant toy to maintain a good rapport. Then only the child would be able to trust you that yes, you are understanding and coming to children, children expresses the most when you are playing with them. Play therapies actually came up because uh, we have to understand child. So I give an example here. My, uh, there was a, a case which I was dealing with and a family conflict ka case tha. So there, uh, <clears throat> uh, the child was playing with the dollhouse. So I also went on the floor, sat on the floor with cross legs, started interacting with the child. I also started placing the things. Now it's a part of non-verbal communication. Why I'm sharing it? Because your non-verbals are giving indication. Children are very sensitive. They understand each and every expression. And they understand how you are you know, dealing with them. So I went down and I started interacting with the child. He has placed um, everybody inside the house, like in the dollhouse, everybody inside the house, like father, mother, grandfather, grandmother, except the mother. He has placed mother near the car in the uh, drive, uh, drive, uh, drive through zone. So I asked him, I was like, why mommy is outside and uh, everybody is inside with you? He's like, oh, mama goes to the work. So she is not able to sit with me. So can you see where is the conflict figure coming from? Children expresses a lot through play and non-verbals. If, if it's a case of separation anxiety, they'll be clinging to the loved object or like mother, father or guardian, whosoever is the most closest to the uh, child. So we need to understand these small non-verbals like where the child is looking or where and even an adult while talking to you is looking, um, if I'm sitting like this, if I'm open for conversation, if I am uh, 
putting forward my uh, viewpoint towards you or i'm giving you attention or not i'm interested or not all these things would be delivered by a non verbal communication that's why the first thing when we take mental status examination of any patient or client even of a child it is general appearance and behavior how good you are with your observation skills when observing a uh, a patient or a client that's why the mental status examination is very important especially the general appearance and behavior that will tell you a lot about the client uh, i will not take much time on covering about observations because ma'am uh, amita ma'am has here in the, uh, yesterday's session has taken a lot of effort to explain the same so <clears throat> after the tone and volume uh, we have understood like we need to paraphrase and we need to reflect back to the client what he or she is that he or she feels confident that we are understanding them in our own words at the same time it's very important to confirm with the patient or the client that they have understood so once you are over with the session towards the end of the session give time to the client that ask questions ask them if they have understood or paraphrase the whole session summarize the whole session and give the key points in a summarized form to the client so that there should not be any doubts any assumptions from their end make you, we should be very sure that with it's a it's a it's a two way traffic so we have to be very sure that whatever we are saying is getting delivered to the client and whatever the client is saying we are understanding the same so both have to be on the same page it should not be read between the lines and assuming things so you should be understanding and understanding what i am saying and not what is making sense to you same goes for the client <clears throat> the client should understand what i am trying to deliver and i am trying to express not what he or she wants to understand because somewhere deep down we all are products of our experiences so we have to understand other person's perspective here not our own perspective so give time and ask patient if there is any confusion if there is any uh, doubt that they want to you know clarify or that they want to ask so this is i think a whole lot of my clinical experience that i have shared um there is one more point that i would like to uh, add here that when we are dealing especially with children <clears throat> it's very important to take assent form before entering the therapy uh we with respect to adults we go for consent but with respect to uh, minors we go for assent because their rights are also important so they should be they should be giving their willingly you know enrolling for interacting with you at a platform and when you are having a conversation with a child and when you are having a conversation with adolescent adult and geriatric patient that is senior citizens the way of communicating would be very different because uh, uh, coming to specifically to indian scenario uh, dealing with geriatric would be very much similar uh, to dealing with a kid especially with the cases of dementia where there is a lot of uh, behavior which are very similar to that of a child so i think i would rest my uh, conversation here uh, thank you so much uh, ma'am indeed uh, rashi ma'am the session was really very interactive because the best part is that the the workshop is on effective communication and every single participant is getting an opportunity to directly ask their question share their views which was which actually they couldn't able to share in their normal routine time so thank you ma'am with Thank this you. i request you to accept the gratitude this, uh, in the form of a certificate for sharing your valuable knowledge as a guest Thank speaker you. on do's and don'ts for effective co counseling during the workshop on importance of effective communication thank you so much ma'am thank you thank you so much